Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christi. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to DBMS, applications of DBMS, and we're going to study the concept of data independence or abstraction and instances and schemas. So let's begin. First, I would like to begin with the definition of DBMS. And for that, we need to first define what a database is. So a database is a collection of interrelated and persistent data. The meaning of the word interrelated is data that is related with each other. So a database uh, consists of a number of tables and uh, those tables have columns and rows. But these tables are not just random tables put together uh, and collected. It, they are tables that are actually related with each other and that is what makes a database and that's why the word interrelated has been used. The data should also be persistent. Persistent uh, means data that remains in the system for uh, a long time till you try to delete it. So it shouldn't be data that is there today and not there tomorrow. It has to be present in the system for as long as you want it to be present in the system. Now let's define a database management system. So a database management system is, first of all, it is a database. So that's why it is a collection of interrelated and persistent data. But along with that, because it's a management system, it also has a set of programs that allow you to access that data and to manipulate that data. So that's what a database management system is by definition. Now let's see where it is used. One of the applications of a database management system is in enterprises. In enterprises, it is used for sales to, to keep a track of how many items are sold and how many items are still there to be sold. It is used in accounting to keep a track of uh, what kind of uh, accounts are available, what kinds of, what are their balances. It is also used in human resources to make sure that uh, there are, to make sure everybody is paid enough salary and um, everybody is paid the correct salary. So in human resources uh, to store all types of employee details, databases are used. It is also used in manufacturing. So in manufacturing companies also, um, they need to keep a track of which parts are required, which parts are used. So for all these purposes, we require a database. It is also used in online retailers because online retailers too require an inventory management system. And for all these purposes, we use a database management system. Another application of a database management system is for banking and finance. In banking systems, the database management system is used for keeping track of credit card transactions also keeping track of the types of accounts that uh, each person is having, the balances in those accounts, all types of transaction details about when the last debit was made or the last credit was made. So all these things are done using a database management system. In finance also, a database management system is required in order to know things about you know, stock market so how many stocks are there, what kind of prices they have, and how much profit they made. All these things can be kept track of using a database management system. DBMS is also used in universities. In universities, uh, databases are used to keep track of all the details of the students, including their marks and the subjects that they are taking, their examinations, their timetables, and everything. Databases are also used in airlines to uh, know how many bookings are there per flight, uh, what seats are booked, and what are the costs of those bookings, and who has booked that. Everything is uh, maintained within a database. Databases are also used in telecommunication sector, and this is one of the widest uses of a uh, database management system because telecommunication is something that we all use 
every day, every hour, because we all have mobile phones. And so there has to be some system that can keep a track of um, how many calls were made and uh, how much data was used and per person, what is the plan going on, whether it's a prepaid account or a postpaid account, all these things are kept track of uh, in telecommunication, which is one of the applications of database. Now let's talk about data independence or abstraction. So the diagram that you see here is a diagram, a very famous diagram, uh, which is also known as the three level architecture of DBMS. And in this, you can see that there are three levels. First, the bottommost level is physical level, then there's a logical level, and the topmost is the view level. So all these three levels are used in a database management system and they have special significance. And we are going to see one by one what these levels mean. The first level or the bottommost level is the physical level, which is the lowest level of abstraction. Now abstraction means hiding something. So, so when you're hiding data from someone that is called abstraction. And you might wonder why that is good, but abstraction is necessary in any database management system for it to work efficiently, for people to be able to use it efficiently. And in a minute, you'll come to know why it is required. So for a person who is on a physical level, who's working on this level, that person needs to know how the data is actually stored in the system. It describes all the complex low-level data structures in detail. So this is the, the physical level is actually your storage part where in the hard disk, your data is actually stored fully. And you do not know when, when, even when we are working with a database, even if you learn SQL, which is the language used uh, to program databases, even if you learn all that, you will not be able to know how the data is actually getting stored in the secondary memory because that is, not something that we do. That is something that the system takes care of and we are just used to it. So for all these types of things, the physical level is present and because we do not know anything about it, but we are still able to work with our database, it is known as abstraction because we don't know anything about the physical level. All that information is hidden from us and it is good that it is, it is hidden from us because we can work without having to worry about how the data will actually be stored in the secondary memory. Now the second uh, level after physical level is the logical level. So this is the next level of abstraction. This describes the entire database in terms of a small number of relatively simple data structures. So, the physical level also uses data structures, but the logical level uses uh, still uh, simpler data structures uh, like B trees and indices, which are used to create um, create an index for your database for faster access to data. Data administrators work at this level. So if you are a person who is creating the database and defining uh, things inside about you know, which columns should be there, what should be their data types, and what type of data should be inside. So then you are the, administ the data administrator, and a database administrator would essentially work at the logical level. The next level we have is the view level. So the view level is the topmost level, of course. And it is the highest level of abstraction because if you are at view level, you don't need to know anything about what happens at the physical level or logical level. And so it describes only part of the entire database and it exists mainly to simplify users' interactions with the system. So it simplifies how users interact with the system. And the system may provide many views for one single database. So this would be where if you are using some online shopping system, 
then in that system, you would find that you are able to see only what you want to see. So if I'm searching for a good um, uh, for a good television, then I would be just searching for that. And when I search for that, then all I can see is part of the database because the database of that online uh, shopping system contains lots of things, lots of products, but I'm only able to see the television related data because I searched for it. And to do that search, I didn't even have to write any programming language, you know, any any code because it's it it has a good interface and all I need to do is just go to the search box and enter what I want to search for. And it gives me the data because behind the scenes there is a code going on. There is SQL involved and all these things are involved behind the scenes which get you your data, but you don't have to know about it. And that's why we have the view level abstraction. The view level abstraction allows people like you and me when we are accessing some website to to access it using the graphical user interface without having to worry about how the data is there and what types of tables are there at logical level and how that data is stored on different servers at physical level. So this is what abstraction means. Now abstraction of data, that means hiding of data at different levels uh, leads us to independence, which means when there is abstraction, you can have independence and there is one such independence which is known as uh, physical data independence, which is uh, where although the implementation of simple structures at logical level involve the complex physical data structures which are used at physical level, the user at the logical level does not need to be aware of this complexity and that's why the user at the logical level can work independently, can work independent of the physical level without having to know how the physical level works. So it gives you the freedom to work at the logical level without knowing anything about the physical level. And then the same goes for the, log uh, for the view level also. If you are someone who is accessing a website uh, like Flipkart or Amazon, then you, you are a person who is experiencing logical data independence because to access such websites, you don't really need to know code. You don't need to know SQL. You don't need to know any programming language. You just need to find the search box and enter your data. So that's how simple it is because of data independence or abstraction. Now, towards the end of this uh, video, I'm going to talk to you about instances and schemas. First of all, what is an instance? An instance is a collection of information stored in the database at a particular moment. So if I'm looking at my database right now, so I'm, I'm just opening my database and looking at it right now, then whatever I see is an instance of the database. So you could also consider it as a snapshot or a photograph of your database. So if you just click a picture of your database uh, with all the data in it and all the tables in it, all the columns and data types and everything, if you just click a picture of that, a photograph of that, then that is an instance of your database. It doesn't mean that it's going to remain that way forever because Obviously, if you look at it after a couple of hours or a couple of days, you will find lots of changes in it. For example, that could be uh, that could be a table about um, about uh, say sales in the database. So it's possible that right now the the part there is one particular part which has sold uh, a quantity of two hundred, but afterwards, when you look at it after say three hours, you might see that it is now 500 because it changes. The database itself is dynamic and it keeps changing. But when you look at it, uh, when you take a picture of it, then that picture which is still and that picture which is not going to change is known as an instance of the database. So it is the information stored in the database at that particular moment, at that particular time. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is a schema. So what is a schema? 
The schema is the overall design of the database. And the overall design, by the overall design, I mean whatever is present in the database, whatever columns are present, because a database consists of tables, rows, columns. So when those columns are present, what are their data types? How much can I store in it? So if there's a column called um, address, then how many characters of data can I store in it? Is it limited to some characters or can I just store any amount? Obviously there's a limit. So all these, this information about the database, about you know what tables are there, what columns are there, what are their data types, all these things together, they form the design of the database, the schema of the database. So I hope you understood all this uh, introduction to DBMS and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.